Hello everyone out there. Uh, my name is Devin Adams. I am an instructor uh, down at Tempe, Arizona for Dynamic Worldwide Training Consultants and I'm also a Fortinet instructor. So I teach stuff for the FortiGates and all that good stuff and I make these videos for my students. So uh, for the people that participate in my class. So sorry, uh, took me so long to get the second part and I'm pretty sure there's like maybe one person that was just dying to see the central mat. So I, I'm sorry that it took so long to record this. But anyways, let's jump to it. So in the last couple of videos, we saw how policy net worked and we saw uh, the default behavior. And that's just taking the outgoing IP address of our WAN interface and just essentially overloading it. So we are we are using NAT with PAT to essentially take, you know, one public IP address and and have thousands of private IP address connections happening. And then the other examples, we saw how IP pools could be used. And an IP pool is a collection of IP addresses that we can go ahead and put on a firewall policy. And instead of just one, it can it can pick from several behaviors. So uh, most notably, if you have like a range of public IP addresses you want to use instead of just the outgoing WAN interface. And then lastly, we did our VIPs which is our virtual IP addresses, and that is destination NAT. So this is where the firewall policy defines the NATing through what's known as a VIP object. So coming from the WAN, going into our DMZ, it can hit the web server here and present web pages. We also saw a real quick example of the benefits of a DMZ because even if we physically get this machine compromised, there's no, there's no going out. Ah, excuse me. So there's no firewall policy to let any traffic go out. So uh, we accomplished that, and the common thing between all of these were the firewall policy. So the firewall policy is where all the netting is defined. So um, now we're going to focus on what's known as central netting. So central netting is a feature on the FortiGates, and that is instead of a firewall policy defining what gets netted, it defines the netting rules in a table. It's top-down, just like our firewall policy rules, but uh, it gives us absolute granularity over what gets natted when. Um, we can have way more level of detail of what IP addresses get natted in what situations down to the source and destination ports. Um, yeah, so it's kind of neat. Uh, it is not turned on by default, so we're going to see here in this video you do have to do some CLI, and it's purposely going to break in my example because I just wanted to show you what can happen when we try to turn on central NAT when um, we have VIP objects being used and we have IP pools being used, they should not flip over. So, um, and then after that, we'll go ahead and I'll record another videos for our IP pools and our DNAT. So in this video, oh, excuse me guys, I always record these way too late. In this video, we're simply going to do, uh, uh, or we're simply going to turn on central net. And then after that, we're going to write our default NAT rule. And that's going to be pretty much our, our bottom rule that everything falls through. And it can go ahead and uh, grab that rule to do some kind of like, you know, general NATing. One of the better benefits of a central NATing table, too, is that you don't have to go over thousands of policies. If you're a really big managed service provider, you can just have one table to define a handful of rules and then just have those default options sitting at the bottom. So. And also, there's this new next generation firewall option on the FortiGate that has policy based application control and web filtering, right? That's only available on Central Net. So I might throw that in later on as a video. But uh, let's go ahead and see this thing not work. Everyone ready? Let's do this. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do here is probably find my mouse. Okay. Let's look at this PC here. And let's log into our Florida Gates if I can remember what my super secret password is. All right, so there we go. So our Florida Gate right now is in our policy based NAT. So let's just confirm that real quick. So if we go to IP policy 4. If it ever loads, come on, buddy. You can do it. I found out if you if you move the mouse a little bit, it loads faster. Anyways, when this loads up, you're going to see that our natting rules, there it goes, are directly on the firewall policies themselves. 
So right here we have an IP pool being used, all right? And then also for our DMZ, remember the natting's actually not done per se. Here it's done on that VIP rule. And there is the web server VIP that's also in use. So, but now we're going to go ahead and log into our FortiGate. So let me go ahead and double click our FortiGate here. And I'm going to turn on central NAT. And we'll see if that works. And like I said, with all intents and purposes, it should not. So here we go. So let me go ahead and log in. All right, clear that screen there. And it's going to be a config system, oops, system settings, set central NAT to enable. Oh, and right away, without even committing it, it said, sorry, you cannot do this. There's a policy that it's using IP pools. So if this is the case, and this also brings in the whole idea of if you're going to do central natting, it is way easier to do it at implementation. But trying to migrate to it, you're going to have to have like a maintenance window, an actual plan to do this, because obviously you don't want to interrupt services. Um, but you can feel just with uh, the push of um, Fortinet and the different features that are available, central netting is going to give you the most options. And it's my personal experience too. Uh, if you're dealing with a lot of complexity in your firewall rules, uh, central net's just going to be the one you're going to choose anyways. But it looks like we got to get rid of that IP pool. So that was the first example of it not working. So let's go ahead and fix that. So here I'm going to go ahead and edit this and take out the IP pool. Oops. Actually try to edit the IP pool altogether. Oh, come on, buddy. And as you can see here while we're waiting, there is no central netting options being presented in the GUI. So um, they will appear once we actually enable this going forward. So, and I have no idea why that's acting so slow. So, um, here we go. So let's just, uh, open this bad boy up. We'll actually have to drill into it and we'll just go to the default using the outgoing interface and hit okay. All right. Good times. Now let's see if that fixed it. So, all right. Oh, right away you saw how it said, sorry, you're using a VIP uh, as our second error. So once again, guys, you cannot have any IP pools being used and you cannot have any virtual IP addresses mapping from the outside in or vice versa, destination NAT being used when you turn on central NAT. It just simply won't allow you. Now, also another caveat I should mention, if you are running 5.6, 40 OS 5.6, and you turn on central NAT, you will actually get an implicit rule written for you at the bottom of the, the uh, central NAT table that allows NATing going out using um, the outgoing WAN IP address. So it essentially keeps NAT working for your internal to external using overload. In 6, though, there's no NAT written and it will it will drop the traffic too. So just something to be careful of. If you're running 6.0 and you turn on central NAT, uh, nothing's going to get through until you write the central NAT policy. But let's go ahead and take care of that VIP next. So this one uh, might not be as, as mission critical. So let's see what happens if we just disable the policy and try it again. Nope. It actually wants us to get rid of it so that's fine I'm just gonna do a temporary none in here which essentially turns off the firewall rule anyways so there we go now that I went ahead and I changed the IP pool and I got rid of the the VIP it went ahead and let me do those changes now to actually commit we have to do our end there we are and if we come back to our FortiGate and we hit refresh, we're going to have some new rules in the GUI that we didn't have before. So now we have our central SNAT, and then we also have DNAT and virtual IP addresses. IP pools are still there, 
but everything's going to come down to the central SNAT table. Now, I'm going to wait for a moment for this to load because I want to show you guys what happened when we turn that on. So right here where we had our normal custom rules, it's saying now that, uh, sorry, these natting options are not going to be defined, right? They are not going to be defined here. They're going to be defined in the central natting table. So um, right away we lose control over the natting on the firewall policy and now it's making us go to the central nat to do so. Now our normal internet connection, right, um, should be dead. So because we did not write a rule for it and we are running 40 OS 6, let's see if we can ping out somewhere. Yeah, nothing. So it's it's dead, guys. Now, if you're running 5.6, don't be scared if suddenly you can go out because uh, 5.6 40 OS does have that implicit natting rule that does overload by default. So, But let's go ahead and fix that there. So we're going to write a natting option as our, as our fall through. Okay, so we're going to come down here to our central nat table and we're going to, as you can see, there's no rules. We're going to create a new one and we're going to say the incoming interface is going to be our LAN and our outgoing interface is going to be our WAN and anything coming in from our internal network. Now normally I would have it more specific than this but we're just kind of making a default catch-all using the outgoing IP addresses. And if we wanted to, we could actually use the IP pool that we were using before. But do you see how it's now being defined in the table itself? So not at the firewall policy. But look at, look at this granularity. I mean, we can, guys, we have full control over how we do our natting. It's, it's quite impressive, actually. So uh, we'll go ahead and hit OK. Now that there's a rule there, we should be able to get out. And as you guys can see now, natting is happening. And it's using the original IP address that we just a moment ago uh, took out of our firewall policy to, to make it all happen. So we're back to at least our outgoing traffic being initiated from the inside coming in. So once again, guys, we have a central NAT table, and the natting options are going to be defined here. And in our later videos, we're going to watch how to um, essentially do our do our uh, VIPs. So I know I kind of I kind of combined to doing our IP pool there too. But if we wanted just our normal overload, we could just say use the outgoing interface, and it would use our normal WAN interface IP address as the outgoing, and it, it still works. So, all right, guys. In the next video, we're gonna see uh, our DNAT happen. And then after that, I might do a video on application control and web filtering, or I might keep that from a, for a different video. I'm not quite sure yet. But that is essentially at the heart of S, or at SNAT, at a central natting table. No longer is it the firewall policies, but it's being defined at a table with rules. So, okay, I'll see you guys in a little bit, and hopefully it won't take me so long to record the next video. Take care.